Good morning and happy Easter. Easter. Welcome to this Easter morning. As the ancients would celebrate the equinox, that time when the sun is at its zenith over the equator, when the tilt of the earth is such that the northern and hemisphere, southern hemispheres are illuminated equally. We're welcome to this Easter morning. As the ancients would celebrate the moon returning in fullness again after its darkened death, the return of light to brighten the darkness of the skies. We're welcome to this Easter morning as the ancients would celebrate life using the ancient symbols of the cross, the X, the great plus sign, that intersection of physical and spiritual where all life takes place. We're welcome to this Easter morning as we celebrate the rising of the spirit, the resilience and determined strength of the sacred within us. When we celebrate the inexorable resolve of life's perseverance, that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come can separate us from love and spirit that rises in us again and again. We celebrate this day, we celebrate this community, all of us who are gathered here this morning, and we celebrate the land on which we gather. We honor and share gratitude for those who have called this land home for thousands of years. As people of treaty, all of us, we honor the heritage and gifts of the First Nations and Métis people with whom we call this place home. And as we gather here in this circle, we celebrate that there's a place for all of us. Whether you're here often or you're here once in a while, whether you're here for the first time or for countless times, you're welcome and we make room in this circle for each of us. And so today we celebrate all in life that's worth celebrating, and we're all a part of it. Welcome to Easter. One of the words that we share in this time of Easter and this celebration is the word Alleluia a word that means praise be to all that is good. And so I invite you after each of our phrases to respond with that time-honored word of this day, Alleluia. When the universe was young, the expanding, contracting, the heating and cooling sacred energy was giving birth to all we know. Alleluia. Alleluia. When the earth was young, creatures made their way from water to land as creation evolved and sacredness continued to find new forms. Hallelujah. When humanity was young, people came together in communities, celebrating the sacred need to make meaning in life. Hallelujah. Not so long ago, a man known as Jesus of Nazareth, surrounded by religious leaders, anxious politicians and silent friends, held a vision of sacred community in the here and now. Alleluia. Alleluia. When surrounded by powers that rejected this vision of love and compassion, voices have always whispered and shouted this dream was alive, that community and living love triumphs over violence and hate, over greed and fear, over despair and death. Alleluia. On this day and many days, we celebrate the unsilenced voice of love and the vision of abundant and sacred life. Alleluia. Alleluia. We have many stories that give us this festival we celebrate that we call Easter. One of those stories comes from Luke's Gospel, written in the last third of the first century. And this is Luke's telling of a, of a created story to breathe life into a community that was desperate for hope and meaning. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb bringing the spices they'd prepared. 
They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they didn't find the body. While perplexed about this, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified. They bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in the Galilee that he must be turned over, crucified, and on the third day he would rise again. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who told this to the friends of Jesus. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they didn't believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is one version of the Easter story passed down to us from a first century Christian community. Sometimes our hope feels as brittle as a dry branch. Sometimes our hearts seem broken, broken beyond repair. Sometimes the obstacles in life seem insurmountable and there seems to be no way forward. Fear continues to breed extremism and unspeakable violence seems to be our only answer. There seems to be no oasis to which we can turn, greening our withered dreams. And in the world of the ancient story, these grieving women rise from sleep and step into the morning light, preoccupied with the obstacles that stand between them and what their grief calls them to do what their grief calls them to do at the tomb of their beloved leader. And their hearts feel as dry as their tongues. And they make their way without speaking a word of the brittle disappointment that's heavier to carry than those spices in their sacks. They arrive at the tomb only to be surprised that the stone requires nothing of them. The obstacles no longer in their way. Instead, they are questioned by strangers who want to know, why do you look here for what can only be found elsewhere? Why do you look in a tomb for what you have found in villages and at wells and beside a lake shore and around tables and on the hillsides and even in the courtyard of the temple? Why do you look beyond? for that which you will find within. Isn't Easter the name of whatever experience in our lives awakens us to obstacles removed, to alternatives to enmity, to the bud of beginnings when we've only imagined endings, to the empty cup, transformed by all that fills us with wonder and potential wherever love and light abound.
As we gather on Easter morning, we light this candle to honor the light in us and among us. The light that though darkened, though hidden, though almost extinguished at times by the winds of challenge and grief, of fear and hatred, this light always remains. The spark of which enlivens and grows as the light and warmth of the sun. The light of the sacred is always among us. May this light as it burns in our gathering this morning remind us of all that unites us, of all that is sacred and holy among us. May this light be a reminder of the hope and peace in our very midst, even now. And so in the spirit and in the glow of this light, we gather with our words as well. May we share these words as they center us this morning. We gather as spiritual community in this eclectic, open, and supportive circle. We celebrate that this is a place where we love and pray into being new possibilities for one another. We call out of each other the best of who we are and who we could be. With joy, may we give ourselves to a deep and authentic engagement with life and know what it is to be involved in the adventure of living. May we work at building lives that ever seek awareness of the sacred, framing our lives around love, hope, vision, and compassionate action. May we open ourselves to new possibilities that take root and grow in us and in the world, that we might rise to this adventure, alive to what might be, we pray. May it always be so. I have a blank piece of paper. And I thought maybe you could help me fill it. Uh, I want to make a list today of great things that are worth celebrating. Now, these don't have to be fancy. These can be anything that you can think of that are just really good and really great things. And they're worth celebrating because Easter is a good time to celebrate. So, Ethan, you've already got an idea. Let's start the list. Come on. Oh, yeah. Playing in the playground with other people and in 
just a... And, um, you know, groups of people, that's pretty great, too. I'm going to write that down. Okay, who has another one? Yes? So, to bike ride with friends and to play games with friends? I love that. Great. Okay. This is something we're celebrating. Who else has a great thing? Yeah, Evan? To play what time is it, Mr. Fox? <laughs> that is a great thing. Okay, who has another great thing to share? Something just really good, really great that you love. Yes, Robert, another one? Oh, yeah. Sleepovers. <laughs> We're celebrating that. Sure. Anyone else? Mine's the longest. I think it is. You're right. <laughs> we can celebrate lots of words. Uh, do any of you like um, eating certain treats on Easter? Is this a, something worth celebrating? Uh, Kara, what? Eating chocolate. Eating chocolate. Yes, I was waiting for that one. Uh, what's something else we're celebrating? Uh, you've got another one, Evan. Go. Carrots? Carrots? Yes. Why not? Let's celebrate carrots. Liam? Uh, eating chocolate eggs. Eating chocolate. And I, yes, so um, we're going to put it twice. Eating chocolate eggs. Sure, why not? Um, now, we're going to take a break from the carpet and just go and get a few from the chairs. Something worth celebrating. Great things. Grandkids, grandchildren. Okay, another one from this side of the room. Family. That's worth celebrating, right? How about in the middle? Humor. Yeah, if we can't laugh, geez, we'd be pretty sad all the time. Uh, okay, good. I hear music, I hear spring, and I hear birthdays. Sunshine. Okay, so uh, we could go forever, but this is, this is a fantastic list, and um, it's really great, and um, it's going to appear on our screen. Pretty soon it's going to appear on our screen as something fun that everyone can see. Thanks. Now, um, I, just, I just want to say that this is, this is really great that we had all these things to celebrate. And here's why I wanted to do that. So I want us to pay attention to this part really special. Um, Easter is about finding ways to celebrate the really important and special and exciting things in life. Me too. Me too. I like chocolate bunnies. Um, Me too. These things are powerful. Did you know that all these things that we love and are great things we're celebrating, do you know that these are very powerful things? They're very strong and they're very powerful. And I'll tell you how. Because they remind us of the part in us that is also powerful. Did you know that you've got power in you? You're strong. You're powerful. Yes, you're strong and powerful. Not only like this, but you've got strong and powerful spirits in you. And you know what? That, that is stronger than anything. It's stronger than that which can make you feel sad. It's stronger than the things that scare you. Yeah, it's right. Those things in you, those things we're celebrating are stronger than all of that stuff that's sad and scary those things are strong, and they're the most alive part of us. I, I can touch the in the car. Of course you can, my dear. Now, we're going to do something very special. We're going to remember that this strong, powerful spirit in us 
to remember these things and to celebrate them is stronger than all those things that are scary and sad. And there are so many things in life to remind us of that. There's this list we made. There's the fact that in the spring, like right now, things grow outside that show us about this strong, beautiful power of life. Look at this. Life just bursting into fuzzy little cute things. <laughs> it's so amazing. I want you all to take one piece of pussy willow branch. The one that you've got. And um, do you see that our table is full of dry, ugly, dark <laughs> things? Stones and dry sticks and dead leaves. It's pretty depressing up there. Let's go add some new life to our table, okay? No. Go put your pussy willows on the table. It'll be a wonderful symbol of spring. These are the words of Mark Nepo in his book of Awakening in an article he entitled, The Way is Hard but Clear. The naturalist and environmentalist Kevin Schribner tells us that salmon make their way upstream by bumping repeatedly into blocked pathways until they find where the current is strongest. Somehow they know that the unimpeded rush of water means there's no obstacle there. And so they enter that opening fervently, for though it is the hardest, the way is clear. The lesson here is as unnerving as it is helpful. In facing both inner and outer adversities, the passage of truth comes at us with powerful momentum because it's clear and unimpeded. So where we sense the rush of truth, we must give it our all. As human beings, the blocked pathways of our journeys can take many forms. And whether it's in avoiding conflict with others or not taking the risk to love or in not accepting the call of spirit that would have us participate more fully in our days, it's often easier to butt up against the blocked pathways than to enter fervently the one that is so powerfully clear. In this regard, salmon intimately model a healthy persistence by showing us how to keep nosing for the unimpeded way, and once finding it, how to work harder to make a way through. 
Some say it's easier for the salmon since the power of their drive to end where they begin isn't compromised by the endless considerations that often keep us from the truth. But still, it's the heart's capacity to rise one more time after falling down, no matter how bruised, that verifies that such a drive lives in us too. Like salmon, our way depends not just on facing things head on, but in moving our whole being through. These are the words of a contemporary author. Sometimes it seems impossible to find our way. Sometimes the openings in life are only found between a rock and a hard place. Sometimes we need the wisdom of salmon swimming through the strongest current to remind us that the hard place is where we will find a path through the stones. Perhaps Easter is what happens to each of us. In whatever unsuspecting moment, someone or something rolls the stone of fear away and we find new courage within ourselves. Or someone, or somehow, we roll away the stone of grudge and we experience forgiveness. Or somehow that stone of silence is dislodged and we speak our way through to a healing truth. Or the stone of indifference is rolled away and we open to our passion. Perhaps Easter awaits each of us in whatever unsuspecting moment. We experience a path through the stones Maybe it's opened by the goodness of a friend or the kindness of a stranger or the suddenness of an insight or the courage we find to seize the difficult moments and face the current, knowing that it's the hard way that is the right way, that is the best way. And even when life seems to abandon us on a patch of scree, the wisdom the ancient stories celebrate this day and the deep wisdom carried by generations of salmon making their way home affirms that there is a path through the stones. We will find it in the opening where the stone has been dislodged, moved away, but it will not be the path of least resistance. It will be the path that calls forth our greatest persistence. Sometimes it seems that life is full of the rubble of the past. The leftover pain of broken relationships or the residual bitterness of professional or creative dead ends. The swirling dust of collapsed expectations. The broken hopes of failed health and loss and grief. Rebuilding something new can seem impossible when we look around and all we see is rubble. The dusty broken bricks of whatever we had spent time building that is now just collapsed and lying and littering the landscape with what used to be or what could have been or what wasn't quite. 
Perhaps Easter is what happens when we begin to hear and feel the wisdom of clearing a small space in the rubble. Even if just small, perhaps Easter is that clearing where we can stand and ponder what's happened and see a glimpse of our present reality. When we can sit down with each other and start making a list of that that's worthy of celebrating. A blade of grass poking through the dry earth, a bud on a tree, a small clearing of sanity in the midst of all the rubbish. A chocolate Easter egg. After the World Trade Center was attacked in 2001 and the Twin Towers fell, Americans and perhaps the Western world was devastated by a new reality of terrorism and loss of safety and sanity. And although that seems like many years ago, it's a loss and a reality that we're still living, even this week. And yet gradually in New York, that rubble was cleared. It was cleared not to forget what happened there and, quote, move on. It was cleared as a way to see the way towards something new. It would have been very easy to build two identical towers on that site. And, and yet there was no attempt to recreate what was there before. Rather, the cleanup allowed for what was helpful to be saved. Pieces of steel, small pieces of concrete that could remind us, that could serve as memorial and reminder. And all the other clutter was cleared away so that a place to remember could be built, so that we might be reminded not just of what happened and not just of the fear and the terror that it caused, but so that something could be built that reminded us of how we might live differently. Something could be built that, that might remind us of how we might build, if not a better world, then at least better relationships with those who live among us. If not a better world, at least stronger compassions or deeper understanding. Perhaps Easter is what happens when we glimpse that going back and recreating the past and trying to recreate out of all of that same rubble isn't the answer. Perhaps Easter is when we glimpse that in the clearing of that rubble, we might see what could be possible for tomorrow. In the world of the Easter story, the friends of Jesus were de devastated by the loss of their leader, which in the rubble of the crucifixion meant the death of his ideas, the loss of his teachings, the end of a movement, the end of the line for this new way of spirited living centered on love and inclusion and compassion. And why wouldn't it mean the end to that? There was a concerted effort. There was a concerted effort by the empire of the time to wash it away, to completely get rid of it. And they did their best. And so in the rubble of crucifixion, those friends sat With the, with the thought that this was it. But for those friends, Easter came too. And it had nothing to do with a literal empty tomb and not finding a body. Easter came for these friends. When the extreme pain of the death that they had just experienced was helped by some good sleeps, was helped when the details of the burial were accomplished, 
It was helped when the flurry of the commotion and the emotion had a chance to calm. A time came when those friends were able to see that the loss of Jesus didn't mean and didn't have to mean the loss of the Jesus movement. They glimpsed that his teachings perhaps were not lost because there they were sitting right there. Easter came for that group of friends when they fathomed for the first time that perhaps they were the conduit through which all they'd learned and all they'd experienced would carry forward. And where did they start building their communities in order to carry on with this new direction? They didn't start them there at the tomb. They didn't stay there in the rubble of death and destruction. They didn't build their churches at the foot of the cross or in the opening of the tomb. They didn't stay in that rubble. They cleared it. They kept what they needed and then found their way to the places they needed to be to build the relationships that they built and help the people that they helped and lived the way they lived. And as they did it, they discovered what was next. As they imagined a life lived on those spiritual values was still possible without their leader, they saw within themselves leadership. And they knew it was possible as long as there were people willing to live those values with them. Well, this is my father and I. <clears throat> no comments, please. I know. I, whatever you're thinking, I already know. My father has always been a do-it-yourself kind of guy. Before I was born, he converted our bungalow into a two-story. When I was a baby, he built an in-ground swimming pool, which is what he's doing there with my older brother. When I was in junior high school, he renovated the kitchen. The point is, whenever he had time around the house, he was doing something, fixing something, tiling something, replacing something. I never once saw anyone other than my father called into the house to do repairs. And as his youngest child, who had time to hang around his father as he tinkered and fixed, and he had a refrain that I learned well enough over the years. The right materials, the right tools. His workroom had every imaginable tool, and, and if he didn't have it, he went and got it. Dad was a great improviser, but when it came to having a tool for a job, it had to be just the right tool. The garage filled with every kind of lumber, metal, plastic bits and bobs of every type, just in case he needed the right material, the right tool. I share that because it's helpful when we're talking about clearing the rubble, rubble and building something new out of this Easter. Sometimes we wonder why it is that we keep cycling through the same issues over and over again. On a personal level, we repeat family challenges, we get stuck in the same emotional patterns, we even bump into oh-so-familiar job issues, our country is the same thing. We, we, hear, in the same, we see, hear the same form of racism. We, we hear the same talk of recurring financial train wrecks. We hear the same tired routines of politics. And do we keep trying to rebuild our lives using the rubble from whatever collapsed rather than choosing new materials instead?
when we construct our Easter this year, we need the right materials and the right tools. In many respects, the myth of the phoenix rising from its own ashes works to sustain the illusion only that you can rebuild using ashes and rubble. Perhaps Easter awaits each of us when we recognize that we can't build a life using only the rubble of what's come before. Perhaps Easter awaits us in the clearing, where we begin again to stack just the right brick on top of another. Seeing our way to new vision as we construct something new, something amazing, something that next year will add to our list and celebrate as a great thing. May it be so this Easter in so many ways. We pause in this day to offer our prayers as community with one another. Let us quiet our hearts, open our minds, and be in a place of openness to the spirit of prayer. We pause this day to celebrate the sacred emergings of life, the resilience of the seasons of our hemisphere and the seasons of our hearts. With gratitude, we celebrate life's moments of fullness, moments when we've known the abundance of gratitude, of love, of generosity, moments when our hearts have been flooded with the grace of living. As we remember this day, those whose hope is withered by violence, rejection, abuse, hunger, poverty, and despair, those for whom life is painful beyond words, May our remembering move us to renew our commitment to be an Easter people, to be those seeking a way out of no way, clearing the stones and making a path, clearing the rubble that stands in the places of hatred and harm. In the midst of the devastations, that have come as acts of nature and acts against our better nature. May we find a way to build something new. May we find ways to bring our irrepressible yes to life glimpsing a hope eastering up in us of no dead ends to growth, to choices, to chances, to calls to be just, no dead ends to living, to making peace, to dreaming dreams. May we awaken to the bud of possibility that would blot out our betrayals in forgiving ourselves and forgiving one another and bid us to begin again to be compassionate and creative, to be true and just, to be bold and beautiful, traveling lightly, taking time for curiosity, finding healing in laughter, taking nothing for granted and especially not the love that links us to each other and the buoyancy which is our source of being. May we awaken this day to practice resurrection, 
grateful that the things of any violent and fearful Friday can be transformed into the sacred emergings of a Sunday of each new day where we commit once again to live in ways that enable life to flow and flourish with possibility. May it be so. Amen. Sometimes inexplicably a few good nights sleep and the light of a new day changes everything. Sometimes when we return to a place or a memory or an idea, things aren't quite where we left them. Sometimes in the light of a new day, the obstacles don't seem to be as immovable and we begin to see there is a path, there is a way. Sometimes in the light of a new day, we see the budding of new possibilities where we thought there were only dead ends. Sometimes in the light of a new day, we see that we don't have to meet violence with more violence, but there is the possibility of another way, a way of greater beauty and harmony and possibility. Sometimes in the light of a new day, we see that as life has been poured into us, we too are ready to pour ourselves into life. And so it is we go on this Easter day, carrying light within us, the light of love, of hope, of deep possibility. And we take this light knowing that there is strength and love and beauty within us. There is sacredness everywhere. And so we go to meet our light with the light that is within all of us, between us, beyond us, and among us. We go in deep peace and great possibility.